In this video, I'm going to be talking about the key to a three-headed rushing attack in Madden 23. This is a critical element in our tight Y off offensive ebook. Now, if you've been watching the channel over the last couple days, you've been noticing kind of a shift in content strategy. Basically, what we're trying to do is give you guys the tools to create offensive and defensive schemes out of anything that you would like. Now, we have very in-depth ebooks on our Patreon page if you want to get some ideas of what those look like or just how to run those. I've got a ton of resources on that Patreon page. It's only ten dollars to become a member it'll get you access to all of the resources and ebooks over there and i guarantee that it's going to make you a better madden player so if you want to sign up the link is going to be in the description but i wanted to talk today about a three-headed rushing attack now we've been talking about this tight way off formation and we've shown through the course of the last several videos a ton of really really good passing concepts we've been able to run this pa slot go cross one of the best passing plays in madden this year um, flood drive one of the really good counter plays you have a power play that's a bread and butter play something that you can make go something that you can run again and again and again this is our top 70, 80 percent uh, play. I don't know if you know or are aware about the 80-20 principle, but the 80-20 principle basically just simply states that 20 percent of the uh, inputs result in 80 percent of the outputs, right? So um, really the critical few can actually make a big difference, and that's what the power play is. So if you had to only call one play, 20 percent of your offense, 80% of the game, what would that play be? For this scheme, it would be PA go slot cross. Now the rest of the plays are kind of plays that essentially fill out the scheme, if you will, and they take advantage of the defense over committing to stop this PA go slot cross play. For example, the play flood drive is a great concept to be able to get us to attack deep over the middle and to the left side of the field. And then yesterday we talked about a constraint theory play in the red zone scissors concept, which is a really good quick snap play. I believe that every offense has to have maybe a couple different quick snap plays that they can just come out and make one hot route or less, snap the ball quickly, and be able to attack the defense before they can set up. This is going to enable you to be able to run your offenses at different paces and today we're going to talk about the run running component or the run game and i believe in a three-headed rushing attack a three-headed rushing attack essentially is the ability to run the ball to the left to run the ball over the middle and to run the ball to the right to be able to attack the whole field with the run game is what we hope to accomplish and so i'm going to go over a couple different plays here for us um, the first one we're going to be taking a look at is the inside zone but we're also going to be talking about two other plays that i wanted to go over with you today out of this formation the pa jailbreak screen and the rpo zone alert omaha these are two plays that you can kind of mix in as you need to if you want to attack the defense to the left or the right of the field but really the inside zone is is really the foundation of any kind of good run game as so we're going to show you how it works this specific inside zone i want to show you something with this um so what you're going to notice is the way that the running back is lined up he's offset of this um he's kind of offset of the of the running back or of the quarterback this means you're going to get really good blocking on these inside zones these inside zones, in my opinion, actually give you the best blocking in the game. And you can run these to the left, as you can see right here. I broke it out to the left side. I can also run right down the middle, right? You can run the ball right down the middle, either on the right side or the left side A-gap, depending on how the user is going to be shooting in. But then also something that I want to show you is you can actually take a one cut and get it to the right side and potentially attack the defense on the right side of the field. Now, let's say that the opponent goes down to some kind of like 3-3 cub. It's a very popular run defense this year. This actually, for the most part, will do okay um, if you can get that middle linebacker blocked. That's really the key to this whole deal. And the best way to do that is to simply kind of set it up just like that. And then you can have that cut bat laying either in the middle of the field or the left side of the field. Of course, depending on you know how they're doing in terms of user shooting because what happens, and this is why you need a balanced three-headed rushing attack, is if they know you're always going to run to the to the right or to this left side, they can load the box up and basically try to force you to come back side. So what I want to do now is now I want to attack over in this area of the field because that is where the defense is weak. The same thing is also true, let's say, if they're trying to stop you um, from running the ball, maybe they're going to load up the box and they're going to do something like this to try to stop you from running the ball to the right. Now what I want to be able to do is I want to be able to run the ball to the left or right down the middle of the field, depending on the hole that the defense gives me. The beauty of the inside zone, especially from this formation, is it actually accomplishes all three things within one play. Now this is going to lead me to my 
next piece, which is on these RPOs plays, um, the first play I want to go over is this RPO zone alert Omaha. Basically, we're just going to throw this little screen right out here. Now, you might be saying, okay, well, what's the value of the screen? Why would I do something like that? I'll show you a couple different things here. Um, it just kind of, again, we're trying to just get the ball out on the edge. So it just kind of depends on what you're facing from a defensive look perspective. Oftentimes, these RPOs are... Uh, decent against decent against man and zone. Uh, really, they're designed to beat the blitz. So let's say that you get a blitz that looks like this. Um, so you kind of a run blitz look. What you'll see here is, you know, basically the idea would be that they bail. You could throw this little screen, get that block there, and then potentially get a field. Now we're going to get to more stuff on that side in a minute. But the other thing that I want you to notice here is, let's say that they're in man to man coverage. You have the short and elite ability on CD Lamb, which means he's going to be able to typically win in man-to-man -man scenarios, just like that right there is a great example. So if they're going to play man coverage and they're going to blitz you out of man, let's say that they send a five-man pressure, so this guy's going to be one-on-one -on -one over the middle. If I look out to the right side and I see CD Lamb light up like that, then I'm almost always going to throw that with an outside pass to at least give him a chance to break a tackle. And again, this is another way that in the run game, we're still attacking that right side area of the field. Now, one other thing that I did want to quickly point out about this is let's say that they are setting up kind of a kind of a you know a coverage defense. So, you know, let's say it looks something like this. If you look at this RPO uh, play, what can happen is this linebacker can stay inside like this, and you can still throw this even on a hard flat because they have to pass commit in order for that to actually get out there. Same thing is kind of true. So if you're getting like a lot of dollar and they're blitzing you out of zone um, and that guy on the right side is, is not in a hard flat, you can potentially throw this RPO. Uh, again, I'm just going to go to a standard zone right here and I'll go to this RPO zone alert Omaha. And again, same thing. I'm just kind of looking out there. Now you have to be a little careful because you are technically in an RPO. So the game is going to auto hand it off if you don't, if you don't get the ball out. You know, but again, if they're if they're if they are, um, you know, another thing that's really cool about RPOs that I didn't even get to yet is that they actually do a really good job of handling, um, you know, different types of they give you different types of run blocking. You see the different instant separation things that we're getting as well with this. Now let's talk about the jailbreak screen. So the jailbreak screen is a is is truly a screen pass. Um, within this formation, I actually think this is a decent little screen. What I would do is call this with your with your if the ball's on the right hash, I would call this with your two receivers to the left side of the screen. It's just going to give you a little bit better chance here. But it's truly a screen. I think it's one of the better screens. Again, it's something that is designed to get the ball on the edge in the event that they're not being um, very if they're if they're very lackadaisical in terms of how they're defending. You know, if they're if they're blitzing you a lot or something, that I really like these jailbreak screens, as you can see right here. So you can easily mix this in with your inside zone. So if they're in a situation where let's say that they're gonna run blitz you, right? So they're gonna run a a five man pressure and they're gonna be using in the middle of the field. If you take a look at this jailbreak screen, what's gonna happen here is there's so many blockers flowing to the left side that a lot of times that hard flat is going to get blocked and you're going to be able to basically run underneath it, as you can see, for a pretty nice little gain. So the three and a rushing attack is more than just running the ball. It can be these little quick screen games. I do like to include that in this. But again, the core concept is can you run, can you run the ball to the left, to the middle, to the right? That is really important because if they start shifting, like right here, the area that they're vulnerable is really to this cutback lane. So I want to try to cut this back based off of, again, just a simple box count. Another thing you can do is you can motion these receivers across, right? So maybe I want to clear this man coverage out, and then I want to run off left tackle, like something like that. So this run is equipped to be able to run in any direction that you want, and I think that's one of the really big pieces to any kind of run game. Also, um, it's not the easiest run in the world to shoot, and you have some other plays off of this, like this little quick screen. Now, the way you want to throw the quick screen um, is a little different than the RPO. You have plenty of time, so I can wait and then throw it and get these blockers in position, and you see it's one of the best plays in the game. Guys, I want to thank you for watching this video. This is how to build a three-headed rushing attack out of gun tight way off. If you want to get my 
uh, Patreon page. It's only ten dollars to become a member. It'll get you access to all of my Madden 23 offensive and defensive ebooks, complete schemes that you can use. I believe that the principles in those schemes are also transferable formation to formation. So I guarantee you that by becoming a Patreon member, you're going to get better at Madden. So if you want to sign up for that, the link is down in the description below.